Okay, I'm just gonna try to do it this way and um, do it really quick. Uh, I'm just gonna give you a little short chunk of the book because I think the reason my video is not working is it's too long. Um, and if I do it short, I should be able to post it to Class Dojo. So, I'll just read you a couple pages. This is Unbroken by Laura Hillenbrand. I'm really excited to read it to you. It is um, a really exciting book. It's kind of a page turner. I'm sorry, I can't get into it any more than that. Um, I'd like to start off by showing you a map that's on, printed on the inside of the book. Feel free to pause this and look at it more in depth. Um, notice just how big of a stretch this is. Uh, notice that there is a little, um, there's a sinus guide in the corner here. It's about, the length of my finger is about a thousand miles. So, uh, look at Japan and then we have Hawaii here and, uh, the tip of, uh, California. Notice that only, um, let me look at it, Noesu, Omori, and Ofuna, Japan are listed on that map and Torrance, California is listed on um, the United States side. Those are the only cities listed. So think about it. Why do you think those would be listed? Um, without further ado though, the introduction. All he could see in every direction was water. It was June 22nd, 1943. Somewhere on the Pacific Ocean, American military airman and Olympic runner Louis Zamperini lay on a small raft, drifting. Slumped beside him was another crewman. On another raft, tethered to the first, lay the pilot, a gash zigzagging across his forehead. Their bodies, sunburned and stained yellow from the dye of the rafts, had shrunk into skeletons. Sharks glided in lazy loops around them, dragging their backs along the rafts, waiting. The Second World War was raging, and in the Pacific, America and Japan were locked in a bloody struggle. Zamperini and his crew had been searching for a lost warplane when their bomber had crashed into the ocean. They'd been adrift for 27 days and had floated at least 1,000 miles. The rafts were turning to jelly. The men's bodies were pocked with salt stores, their burned lips so swollen they pressed into their nostrils and chins. They spent their days watching the sky, singing White Christmas. They were alone on 64 million square miles of ocean. A month earlier, 26-year-old Zamperini had been one of the greatest runners in the world. Now his body had wasted to less than 100 pounds and his famous legs could not lift him. Almost everyone outside of his family had given him up for dead. On that 27th day, the men heard a distant, deep strumming. Their eyes caught a glint in the sky, a plane high overhead. Zamperini fired two flares and shook powdered dye into the water, enveloping the rafts in a circle of vivid orange. The plane kept going, slowly disappearing. The men sagged. Then the plane reappeared. The crew had seen them. Overjoyed, the castaways shouted, waving arms starved to little more than bone and skin. The plane dropped low and swept alongside the rafts. Zamperini saw the crewman's profile stark against the bright blueness. Suddenly, there was a terrific roar, and the ocean seemed to boil. It was machine gun fire. This wasn't an American rescue plane. It was a Japanese bomber. The men pitched themselves into the sea and hung under the rafts, cringing as bullets pierced the rubber and sliced lines in the water around their faces. The firing blazed on, then sputtered out as the bomber overshot them. The men dragged themselves onto the one raft that was still mostly inflated. The bomber circled toward them again, the machine guns taking aim. Zamperini's crewmates were too weak to go back into the water. As they lay down, hands over their heads, Zamperini splashed overboard alone. Somewhere below, the sharks were done waiting. They bent their bodies in the water and swam toward the man under the raft. Um, that's the introduction. Uh, and since I'm getting close, I'm probably not going to read any more in this video. Uh, what I want you to do, I posted already, make a little sheet. And as we go through, I want you to keep up with character details. 
for Louis. Um, one thing to note, I know that uh, Mr. Adkins is also thinking about reading a book. You could probably follow along with his book as well. I will say, parents, this book is for the 7th and 8th graders. Um, it is a book about a man who um, he fought in World War II. He was in a Japanese prison internment camp. Um, it's not particularly graphic, but it is not a book that would be appropriate for a much younger sibling. Um, so keep that in mind as I go through these videos. Um, but what I'd like you guys to do is follow along with me as I do these. Um, I guess I'll just do it in shorter chunks, maybe just make shorter videos, and um, we'll keep up with it that way. Uh, I have, this book has a lot of pictures, so I'm trying to decide if it would be easier to do this as an audio clip for you guys, and if you would let me know what is easier for you to use, like if you prefer these videos, I can keep doing little videos, or if you guys, um, if you remember how we did Call of the Wild, if you're an 8th grader watching this, if you liked it better as clips like that, um, I can do that. It just kind of depends on what the majority of people want. Uh, but pay attention as we go along. 7th grade's assignments for this will be different than 8th grade's and uh, vice versa. Um, but anyway, I'll be posting these as well as streaming. I think I'm going to try to stream for about an hour a day um, starting at 10 a.m. just to, to catch anybody that needs help with what we're working on. Um, thanks for listening. See you tomorrow. Or right now if you want to get on my stream right now and talk to me. Bye.